Hey everyone, I posted something on Twitter today that caused a little bit of controversy, and that controversy in turn sparked some interesting thoughts for me that I wanted to share. So the background context here is that recently the author Charles Murray tried to speak at Middlebury College and was prevented from doing so by a student riot, um, which caused him to have to leave and also landed another professor in the hospital who was trying to protect him. And uh, Charles Murray is the author of, most infamously, The Bell Curve. Uh, and he, he writes books on genetics and race and IQ and a bunch of other very controversial topics. Uh, he's been called a racist and a white nationalist and a eugenicist. Um, and I'm not going to go into that whole debate here. That's out of scope. But what I posted on Twitter was a Facebook friend of mine had said in response to the Middlebury riot, uh, I have a new rule, and my rule is, if someone tries to share their ideas in good faith at a university on a college campus, and they are prevented from doing so by a student riot, then I resolve to go out and buy one of their books and read it. And I liked this rule, so I shared that on Twitter. And predictably, there was some disagreement. Some people thought that Charles Murray's ideas did not deserve any more money or eyeballs. Okay, I expected that. The disagreement that I didn't expect so much, although maybe I should have, was over the clause in good faith, um, which basically means like, is this person basically trying to model the world accurately or are they just trying to say whatever is going to get a rise out of people or whatever is going to get them attention? Um, and the objection that I got on Twitter was, well, look, you can't prove that uh, Charles Murray is or isn't speaking in good faith. Oh, and I should say that the example that I gave of someone who I think is not speaking in good faith is Milo Yiannopoulos. Um, as far as I can tell, he's just trying to provoke um, and get attention. And whereas from my perspective, Charles Murray seems basically trying to model the world accurately. Um, and I'm not saying he's succeeding at, at modeling the world accurately, but um, he seems sort of within the normal range of like, a scientist who's going to be somewhat biased, especially on a sensitive set of topics like IQ and genetics and race, um, but like is basically trying. And so it seems to me that uh, it's especially important that we, f for the quality of our discourse, that we allow people who are basically trying to model the world accurately to speak and share their ideas. Whereas it seems much less important to me that we allow um, people who are just trying to provoke and get a rise out of others to share their ideas. Although that doesn't mean it should be illegal, just that I'm not going to go out of my way to try to counterbalance forces that are preventing them from sharing their uh, trollishness. Anyway, so uh, the complaint was, Julia, that's so subjective. How can you prove that Milo's not arguing in good faith and Charles Murray is arguing in good faith? And my answer is, I can't prove that. And what surprised me was that people thought that there should be a standard of proof that would allow us to distinguish who is arguing in good faith and who's not. Of course there's not a standard. There's usually no, no official hard and fast standard. Like, I mean, that's just how we live our life. Like if you, if a doctor tells you you need, need some various medical tests, you just have to use your judgment. Like, is he just trying to cover his ass legally? Or like, is he just trying to sell me something? Or like, does he seem to really think I need this test? There's no rule, you just have to decide. And you can't adopt some uh, universal policy like I will always get the test that anyone tells me I need, no matter what, or I will never get the test that someone tells me I need. You just, it's a judgment call. And the same is true of whether someone is arguing in good faith or not. And the fact that people uh, seem to think it was a, a meaningful objection to my proposed rule or to my friend's proposed rule, which I shared, that you could never prove who's arguing in good faith or not. Um, I guess to me, maybe I'm being uncharitable here, but to me, the fact that someone would make that complaint suggests that they have a view of reasoning that's basically about what you're allowed to conclude. That like, if I can't prove that they're wrong, then they get to believe whatever they want. And if they, uh, if I can't prove that I'm right, then they get to uh, reject whatever I say. And I, I wish that things were that clear cut. That would make things easier. But most of the time, it's just going to be, you're just going to try to use your best judgment uh, or have to, to use your best judgment and decide, like, ah, does this person 
seem roughly right or does it seem like they're trying and therefore deserve to be listened to, et cetera. Um, and of course, that only works if like if you're also trying to, to make the best judgment call you can and, and trying to be as objective as you can. Um, and a lot of people aren't trying and that's too bad, but there's just never gonna be a hard and fast rule. And you can't, I don't think you should use that as an excuse to believe whatever you want.